Uh, let's continue this conversation with former Ford CEO and CNBC contributor Mark Fields. Mark, uh, good morning to you. Nice to have you with us. Uh, you know, what's your take on, on the Chinese EV makers overall and, for example, the quality of the product they're putting out at a certain price point? Yeah, well, I, I agree completely with what Phil just said. If you look at the Chinese EV products right now, they are very, very good. And, and listen, the Chinese knew that they missed, they missed the opportunity with internal combustion engine vehicles in terms of uh, driving market share, not only in their home market, but abroad. And so they doubled down on the EV market, both from a tech standpoint, a battery standpoint, and from a vehicle design and quality standpoint. And, uh, you know, I, I think they're very competitive in their home market. As you heard, they're gaining market share uh, in Europe. These, these products are, are, in some cases, world class. And I think uh, people are going to be really surprised by not only that, but the price points, uh, which are very important to consumers uh, in terms of adopting EVs. It would be difficult, I imagine, Mark, though, for Chinese uh, EV makers to come to the United States and have a fighting chance um, simply because of the, the barriers that are erected in terms of the IRA requiring certain processes to be in the United States, and the Chinese automakers don't, don't have that capacity yet. Yeah, you're exactly right, Melissa. I mean, they're not going to be eligible for, for example, the $7,500 uh, incentive that's available if you meet the local assembly requirements and element requirements of, of the batteries. You know, that being said, if uh, if they have a major cost advantage to start with, you know, you could argue that even if they don't have those incentives, they could still be competitive from a price point standpoint. But then you get into issues around, OK, they have to either build a distribution network or sell direct, which is, you know, a challenge. And then the geopolitical issues, you know, buying a, a Chinese vehicle uh, in the U.S. and all the, 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 the thoughts that go along with that, that's you can't calculate the impact that that would have. Mark, I haven't spoken to at least since we sort of got those announcements from GM and Ford in terms of using Tesla's charging network. I know you may have spoken about it previously, but I'm just curious to get your take on the significance of that, what it's going to mean, you know, if we do finally have it would seem one standard, for example, for charging vehicles here in the U.S. Well, it was a very important announcement. I think, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when you look at the production that's starting to gen up at the, uh, the automakers like Ford and GM and others, the products are coming, the production's coming online, and the automakers and their CEOs are saying, hey, you know, we, we have to get rid of any fear from the consumer about being able to charge their vehicle. And so this was a, you know, the, the question is not, is EVs going to continue to become, you know, a higher percentage of the marketplace, but it's how far and how fast. And when they look at their products coming, they said, listen, we have got to accelerate the availability of chargers for consumers, or we're going to have a big problem. And I think that's why they made the agreement with uh, with Tesla. And the other thing, uh, David, is it's not only the availability of the chargers, it's it, or the the amount of chargers, it's the dependability and the availability of them and the quality of them. Because you know, there's a number of them. I think there was a study done, uh, I don't know, a month or two ago that said one out of every five chargers with the CCS standard was not working. So they get dependability and quality with Tesla, and they get more of them, which is hugely important. Mark, what's your guess on, on the economics of such an agreement in terms of the cost to the Fords and the GMs to use this technology? Well, I think, as I said, they're going to start implementing uh, on their vehicles the Tesla, what they call the North American charging standard, into their vehicles starting in the model year 25 year. So. So I don't think, you know, they have to put, obviously, uh, you know, a charger into the vehicle. So uh, I don't think it's a, it's a huge on cost. Uh, but I do think from a Tesla standpoint, listen, this, they've done a very good job of not only creating a business of vehicles and selling vehicles, but all the ecosystem that goes around that new revenue models. So they're going to get, you know, incremental revenue for uh, charging uh, uh, by having Ford and GM and and I believe others are going to follow pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, that's going to give them advantage because right now the automakers don't make money or make very little money on their EVs. Their margins are poor. Uh, whereas, you know, Tesla has, you know, they cut prices earlier this year. Uh, they, you know, because they're, they have good margins. Uh, but they're looking and finding ways of taking, you know, revenue, if you will, from their competitors over time, which is going to be an advantage for them. Yeah. Finally, to come back to China and the Chinese market, which remains a very important one for Tesla, 
Is it your expectation, given your opinions of those Chinese EVs, that they're going to be facing a much more difficult environment in that country? Well, yeah. I mean, listen, they, they already face a difficult environment there. As, as, as Phil said earlier, you know, Tesla's still one of the major players there. But, you know, when you're competing right at the face of these very, very cost-competitive uh, automakers, you really have to up your game. Uh, and I think that's keeping them on their toes. But it's, it's, it's only going to get tougher for Tesla, both in China and around the world, because, you know, all the established automakers, including the Chinese, are bringing out EVs. And that's why Tesla is working so hard to build out their uh, factory infrastructure, create these other revenue sources for their, for their vehicles and their company. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. But, you know, China is extremely competitive, and that will only help Tesla in their other markets as they learn how to compete there. Mark, thank you.